Location, location, location. Am I making real estate videos now? Uh, hell no. Actually, sort of. What I'm talking about today is something called the Galactic Capital Zone. What's that all about? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's jump into the old wormhole and see what I'm talking about. The Milky Way is a pretty standard galaxy, one of about 2 trillion in the observable universe. Of course, standard can mean so many things, especially in this day and age. That's not to say the Milky Way is insignificant. It's a vast armed spiral of stars and countless other stellar objects, self-contained and packaged by collective self-gravitation. It's a cosmic gated community, circled by a spherical halo of dark matter, warding off the extragalactic night. Containing over 100 billion stars and several billion planets, this behemoth is approximately 100,000 light years across. That's a long way. As Douglas Adams so succinctly put it, space is big. A light year is the distance in which a photon of light travels in one year. Light travels at 186,000 miles in a single second. As Steve Irwin would have said, Crikey! The numbers are insane. The Milky Way is vast beyond comprehension. The crazy part is, however, that as far as galaxies and cosmic objects go, the Milky Way is fairly modest in size. Quite a favourite line from the unfairly maligned movie, The Phantom Menace. Is a bigger fish. So, welcome to the neighbourhood. The Milky Way is one of three larger galaxies forming part of a greater cosmic community called the Local Group. Andromeda and the Triangulum Galaxy make up the other two heavyweights. But it doesn't stop there. The Local Group is part of a greater group, the Virgo Supercluster. This is in turn part of the Atlantikea Supercluster. For after the mere 100,000 light years of the Milky Way itself, things just get out of hand. Now, I'm not going to venture beyond the immediate neighbourhood of the Milky Way. As for the great beyond, the quote to never ending story, that's another story and shall be told another time. Now, we have nearly 50 smaller galaxies orbiting us. The largest small Magellanic clouds are visible to the naked eye. But it's getting harder and harder for us to see them. Urban sprawl and light pollution from the world's cities is removing the stars and galaxies from the sky. If you ever get a chance to get away through remote places where the night sky is still awe-inspiring, then do it. It is absolutely worth it. The Milky Way, like all other galaxies, has a structure. Over time, our view of it has changed. Native Australian mythology believes a band of stars stretching across the night sky to be some kind of river of the night, along with supernatural beings and the spirits of fallen warriors would travel between worlds. I have to admit, mythology puts a really fascinating spin on these things. Now, while it may not be a river, the reality of it is just as interesting. As mentioned previously, we see the galaxy as a band across the night sky. This is because we are looking along the plane of the galaxy. We are, we are after all, embedded deep within it, some 26,000 light years away from a supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A, which is some 4 million times the mass of our own sun. The monster is busily devouring neighbouring stars and clusters in the bulge which comprises the galactic core. Oh, to live in a science fiction movie. Now, let's move on to this Galactic Habitable Zone, or GHZ. For viewers of previous videos, I'll have referred to something called the Goldilocks Zone. Another word for this is the Habitable Zone. We on Earth only exist because we're smack bang in the middle of it. Venus happens to orbit just within the inner cusp of our Goldilocks Zone, or Habitable Zone, whereas frigid Mars lies at its very outer limits. It's the zone around a star where the temperature is amenable to liquid water existing on the surface of a planet, hence greatly increasing its habitability. Of course, life needs a bit more than this, but it sure helps. As far as we know, for now, no life can exist without liquid water. Recently discovered TRAPPIST-1 system comprises a red dwarf sun with four planets within its habitable zone. I'll be exploring these in a future video. As these planets and those within our own solar system, or with their parent star, so does our solar system move around the galactic centre, with the galactic year lasting some 250 million years. What then makes our position in the Milky Way so special? As I say in the real estate business, location, location. You said you've just moved into a large city, looking to set yourself up. You start by looking for a home. 
They all look nice. They're not overly fussy about the house itself, but it has been a good spot. There's a fantastic place on the outskirts of town. Big room, plenty of space to accidentally lose the kids and so on and so forth. There's also this nice little flat smack bang in the CBD, the centre of town. How do you weigh these two places up? The edge of town is nice and there are plenty of open spaces, but it's a drawback. There's nothing out there. Like, really. No one to talk to but trees and ageing hippies. In the centre of town there's an insane buzz. Nothing ever closes. Everywhere you look there's plenty of action. That also worries you. Also, the crush of humanity in the inner city is nuts. There's no room to lose your mind within two weeks of moving in. No thanks. So, you look at somewhere in the middle, out in the suburbs. Life is a little boring, but that's probably for the best. Not much crime or craziness, with just enough to keep your brain from going stale. Uh, and you don't want to be in the main road either. Little kids in traffic don't mix. That decides it then. Now, our position in the galaxy is something like that. Too close to the galactic centre and life will never have made it. It's vastly overcrowded with stars and stellar clusters, not to mention Sagittarius A, and supernova rays are off the charts. You know what that means for life? Curtains. The galactic core is a hellhole of cosmic radiation. Life stands a really slim chance there. Out of the room things are much better. When categorising stars, astronomers group and observe stars under two main types, population 1 and population 2. Population 1 stars, like our own sun, are deemed metal rich, or have high metallicity. In the context of stellar populations, metals are any elements heavier than hydrogen and helium, the most abundant elements in the universe. Such stars are common in the disk, gradually thinning further out towards the galactic rim. Heavy elements are crucial for the construction of all other material in the universe, i.e. planets and the organic compounds needed for life. Out in the rim, Population 2 stars dominate, these stars are older and are metal poor, or have low metallicity. Not much new stellar construction goes on out here. Stellar nurseries, the cosmic factory floor, are more common in the disk. So, so what's this about main roads then? To revisit the real estate analogy, roads are bad news, right? Hardcore traffic is plain dangerous. Well, if we take another look at the galaxy, or any spiral galaxy for that matter, we see that tremendous arms radiate outward from the bulge at the centre. These arms are like the main roads, densely populated with throngs of stars and solar systems whizzing around the centre. Lucky for us, the sun is situated between two of these highways, free from too much interference from nasty neighbours. It was away as time, drifting peacefully through the quiet galactic suburbs. Life, as we're beginning to find out, is extremely tough, but there's no way in God's green earth it would have started at all if conditions on earth were too apocalyptic 